you can think about the Internet of Things as really extending the sphere of technology, the sphere of the Internet, into the real world. NFV, SDN and NEC will be part of 5G. It, it's going to be an integral part, so it's going to be one of the building blocks of 5G. NFV is the baseline for 5G. So we, we, we are pretty much behind the idea of using a lot of NFV in 5G. With these new technologies, SDN, NFV, we're able to introduce some very distinct capabilities into uh, the networks, into the carrier networks. We sort of see also a lot of convergence, so we would expect having an NFV platform plus mobile functions as well as fixed line functions as well as IT and service functions on the same platform. So everything is shaking now. The value chain was really carved out so well. 5G will change that simply because the end customer is not necessarily you and me anymore. Companies you've never heard of, but are really big giants, they want to connect all their stuff Internet of Things, really in the construction world, oil and gas world, etc. Well, good evening, everyone. What a crowd. Very, very big crowd. Thank you all for taking time out of your schedules to join us tonight. Um, after last night, though, I feel I should be channeling my Oscar presenting skills from the great Warren Beatty. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so, welcome to our panel discussion on gigabit fiber, VDSL, and vectoring. Ah, <laughs> oh, don't worry. Who needs the Oscars because we've got 5G? And 5G, as we all know, is far more exciting than any Oscar ceremony. Welcome, everyone, to the Telecom TV Super Panel in partnership with Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Intel on 5G, NFE, and IoT defining the sweet spot. Um, I'm sure, like me, you've all had a very long day at Mobile World Congress, but I do hope we've saved the best till last today. And for the next 30 minutes or so, we will be discussing how 5G, NFE, SDN, and IoT will hopefully come together to really refine the communications world for the next decade or more. Um, NFE and, let's not forget, SDN are amongst the important enabling technologies for 5G architectures, and IoT is expected to be a major use case for 5G services. But you know, how can deploying NFE in the network today lead to the creation of these new use cases like massive IoT in the next decade? What is the transformational path that telco should take now, and what will best position them for the revenue opportunities from 5G when they eventually come on stream. So joining us this evening to debate these issues is a highly experienced and expert group representing network operators and vendors. And whilst they have a lot in common, I'm sure we'll have some differences of opinion too, or at least I hope so. So if I can introduce our panelists now, on my immediate right is Jehan Sabi and you are executive leader of the All IP and On Demand Networks program at Orange. Exactly. Jan, welcome, thank, thank you. Good evening. Next we have a little bit of echo as well. Francisco Javier Ramon Salguero, head of network virtualization initiative, global CTO unit at Telefonica. And in case you missed that, it's Javier from Telefonica. <laughs> Next to Javier is Roy, Roy Kaser, who is Vice President and CTO of the Communication Solutions Business at HPE. Thanks, Guy. Next to Roy, we have Rupesh Choksi, who is AVP of Product Marketing Management at AT&T. And finally, last but not least, is Caroline Chen, who is Vice President of the Data Center Group and General Manager, mm. 5G Infrastructure Division at Intel. Thank you all for joining us. I'm Guy Daniels, I'm Director of Content at Telecom TV. I'm going to be putting the questions to our panelists and uh, we'll, we'll see where we get to. So, I'd like to ask you all, firstly, one at a time, and Jan, if I can start with you. Um, we're here to clarify the interaction between these technologies as we move towards 5G, but can you articulate your position of what you believe 5G will look like? What is the form that 5G will take? Yeah, so and especially yeah, focusing on the synergies between the three you mentioned, um, we strongly believe that 5G will be natively virtualized, 
And um, of course, it means that we could leverage the prior NFV and SDN deployments, NFV and SDN first uh, rollout, to then um, uh, launch the 5G services and so leverage the business opportunities it brings at scale immediately. And so we are currently running our SDN and FV transformation. And so we see it, of course, uh, from its own benefit standpoint with uh, business opportunities and use cases in MedDrive, but also an, as an anticipation to this uh, 5G advent and once again the business opportunity they, they come with. And especially uh, it's about the IoT applications and um, the IoT applications are, um, we have an ability to differentiate uh, with this and especially against 4G, uh, thanks to slicing, which is a quite new notion of also, which uh, uh, needs as a mandatory step the NFV as the uh, deployment first. And Javier, what about Telefonica's view of the form that 5G will take? Okay, um, in the case of 5G, uh, I mean, there are two big uh, points here. I mean, one is the business as usual, the evolution of the technology is, is good by itself, it's more capacity, it's more density, it's more, more, number, more support of more devices, that's fine. But here we have a unique opportunity to change the way that we do things. And I, I quite agree with uh, your view, actually, that. Uh, this time, we have the opportunity not only to change uh, the, the, the technology and how the density, of, 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 but also the way that we manage uh, the, the services and we build the services end to end. And that comes precisely because this is a technology that promises to be native for NFV environments. Roy, from AT&T's perspective, Sorry, Roy. Well, I could talk for AT&T, but I don't know if they'd like it. <laughs> I'm jumping. <laughs> jump HP. Right. Roy, Roy, Roy. <laughs> HPE's perspective yeah, on, right. on 5G. Well, I, I mean, I think the one thing we can all agree on, right, is when 5G came about, there was a lot of discussion about radio access technologies and, and speeds and feeds. How do we get more bandwidth? How do we reduce latency? But as you start to put it all together, it's clearly much more than that, right? Mm -hmm. And I think at the end of the day, it's going to be how do we do the best job of putting the compute, storage, cloud-ready software stacks as close to the workloads as possible um, so that we can maximize the performance and the efficiencies. Because uh, this really isn't an evolution about technology, though it is keenly dependent upon it. It's really about revolutionizing the customer experience. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're going to have to evolve the way we think about how we do that. Thanks, Roy. And Rupesh, we're getting to AT&T now. Yeah, so th Come on. <laughs> thank you for getting to AT&T. Start with the A, so, if we're going alphabetically, right? So I, I agree with uh, sort of, you know, what Roy talked a little bit about, sort of the customer experience, right? So, you know, yes, the technology piece, you know, higher bandwidth, latency, faster sort of, you know, access to compute, storage, networking, et cetera, kind of delivering on that agile networking experience. But if you really think about it, right, from an AT&T perspective, we've seen 250,000% growth on our network, right, in the last sort of, you know, 2007 onward. So tremendous amount of kind of traffic growth. And wouldn't it be awesome if all of us as consumers or users, you just like, you know, go from work into your self-driving car that opens the garage, the lights are on, the food is ready, the channel on the TV is up, right? Isn't that what we want? The next day morning, some robot is doing my work, right? So all of this kind of like, you know, experiential differentiation that we're all after, whether it is video assets or consuming different type of things that make the human life a lot easier, a lot productive, underlying, that's what it is all about. And Caroline, what's Intel's view on what 5G will or should look like? So, from my perspective, because we come from the data center group, and we're really looking at 5G is an end-to-end. -end. The end starting one side is from the device. It does not enter the network. It goes all, all the way to the cloud. Because the work that we've done with the traditional Super 7, now Super 7 plus one, yeah. thanks to AT&T, and we look at the likes of Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Baidu, Facebook, 
and so on, they really deliver the services that consumer wants, the enterprise wants. Their revenue and margin and profits been growing tremendously riding the cloud practice. We got to bring that to the network to make 5G not just a delivery uh, pipe, but also a profitable business for all involved, let, not the very least the operators. Right. So how do we get there, though? What's, what's the transformational path? Um, Rupesh, perhaps we, we, can, we can start with, with right. your perspective. You know, it's a massive undertaking, and it's got to be, I guess, step by step. How are you approaching it? Right. So, you know, we, we've been on this journey for a number of years, right? You know, we've been public about it, right? One of the stats that we talk about is, you know, by 2020, 75% of AT&T's network will be virtualized, right? And we've made great progress around that. You know, we've uh, crossed around 34% in 2016 and big numbers for 2017. So it's the building block approach, right? You need the software-centric SDN and control of the network. You need NFV to start to virtualize, to deliver on agility, to deliver on that sort of, you know, pace of innovation that we all want uh, together. But to sum it up, I think it takes courage and conviction. That's what it takes, right? Now, you, you mentioned NFE, and perhaps, Javier, we can, we can come back to you on the subject of NFE. Um, how important is it that a telco should implement NFE today to start this path? For me, it's essential. I mean, if, if you don't manage to, uh, to grasp the opportunity that you have in the transformation, having an, a, a technology that is intending to be cloud native from the very beginning, and you are not used to the NFV technology in, uh, before in, in how to operate that, and what are the actual challenges that it has, which are mostly related to a, 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 not only a technology challenge, but also an ecosystem challenge, and how to change the things together, you will miss that opportunity. And, and we know that for a long time in, in Telefonica, we've been working, it's public that we've been working in, in NFV space for a long time, now more focused on, on the orchestration case, because it, it makes sense in, in, in this environment. And, and, that's, uh, and that's the point that, uh, is, you know, there's been one pain point that you've seen in, in many waves of these of technologies in the past. is when, when you try to mix the fix and the mobile, when you try to fix different uh, technologies in an end-to-end -end service. Now we have a unique opportunity to leverage on the framework that provides NFV and the network that will provide the combination with the slicing to, to work on end-to-end -end services for real and without the recreating in special projects the end-to-end -end chain and see what went wrong. So now we have a unique opportunity, and you cannot use it with, without having a clear experience on NV and what you want to do with that. So. And Jan, Orange has been doing a lot of work on not just NFE, but also SDN. What was your motivation for pursuing this? So um, our motivation with this transformation, so it's and globes and SD, uh, NFP, SDN, and 5G ultimately. So our m motivation is first the user experience and so the new business opportunities we can find leveraging this new business uh, experience. So of course SDN and NFV, as, as was said here, brings a lot of agility in the way we operate but also in the way we build services or we deploy services and even an ability to customize these services on the connectivity side as well as on the uh, service side for a customer or for a vertical, and that's where we come to IoT also. It's uh, to a dedicated vertical that we can also uh, make this uh, value proposition. So uh, that's, that was our first motivation and it's true both for the consumer market and for the enterprise market, even though as most of the actors of the ecosystem, we started with the B2B uh, market because obviously it's the most demanding to date. Uh, customers explicitly expect from us some flexibility in the way um, we are providing the services as well as in the pricing model and this type of uh, on-demand promises are, are key, I suspect, for this advent and for the uh, differentiation then. 